Hi everyone and welcome to what is going to be the last episode in our ability system tutorial series. And in this episode we're going to finally add a drag and drop function to our abilities. So what we currently got in our game is we've got our ability spellbook and we're going to add the ability for it to drag from the spellbook to this action bar at the bottom and allow us to rearrange this action bar uh, to our own needs. So we're going to do this in several stages and the first thing we need to do is create a folder for this to all can to be contained so actually I'm going to put it all in the same as the spellbook folder because it involves the spellbook so we'll keep it in there. So first we need is a drag and drop um, actor so we're going to go add new blueprint class and you can just search in the bottom box here a drag drop operation. Choose this and we're going to call it drag and drop or drag drop that'd be fine and this is quite a basic cast this is all it's going to do is store data about what is being dragged okay so all we need to do on here is click on the variables new variable and give it the ability that it's going to be storing so type in the name ability and the variable type will be ability and it'll be the class reference for it so hover over it and go to class reference and we're going to tick instance editable and compile that. With that done, next thing we're going to do is we're going to click on the spellbook slot. And on the spellbook slot, uh, we need to be able to determine when the mouse has been clicked and when it's starting dragging away from this um, from this button. So go to the graph, and we're going to go to the functions and override functions. So the override functions looks at all the pre-made functions that are part of the widget and allows us to override them and change them as we want. So we want on mouse button down. And with mouse button down, we need to check whether we're using the left mouse button to do a drag function. So drag out from your uh, initial node here and type in drag and you will see detect drag if pressed choose this and the drag key is going to be a left mouse button okay and we're going to drag the mouse event to the pointer event like so um, with that done we're going to drag the return value here to the return value there and hit compile. So next we're going to make the little graphic that is going to be attached to the mouse as it is being dragged around the screen. So we're going to close this for now. We'll come back to it in a moment. And we create a new widget. So go to user interface widget blueprint. And we'll do um, drag UI. And open this up. Now this is going to be a very simple one. We can give it a canvas panel. And we're just going to just put an image into it. That's all it's going to be. The image size we're going to set to um, one two eight by one two eight. And if you want to see what it's going to look like desired, you can change it to desired there. Okay, so that image is there. We're going to change the name of it here to the drag icon, and then go to the graph. And in the graph, we're going to add a new variable, and this is going to be the ability class reference. So ability. And then we want to search for ability and hover over it to get the class reference. So we've got this drag icon. We want to actually now tie the icon from the ability class to the image in our widget. So on the pre-construct event, we're going to drag our ability class out and choose get. And then from there, we're going to get the class defaults. From here we have the ability details which we can split by right clicking on it and choosing split. We can now drag our drag icon variable out, choose get, and here we can set the brush texture uh, from texture, sorry. Plug that into your pre-construct and the texture pin is going to connect to your ability details icon. And that's all we need to do for this to be done here. Well, oh, sorry, what we need most of to make sure we do is on the ability, we want to make sure it's editable and exposed on spawn. Because we need to be able to set that ability um, when we create this widget. 
So close this and go back to our Spellbook um, slots UI. And on the graph, we are going to do on drag detected. So another override function. And you know I'm looking for the on drag detected. And when this detects there's a drag, we are going to create a widget, which is that widget we just made. So drag out here and do create widget. And we're going to choose our drag UI. And now you can see it's asking for an ability. That ability it comes from our variable list. Then we need to take this return value and we're going to promote it to a variable. And we'll call it the drag UI. Hooking it into our execute path. After that, we're going to come out of here and do create drag and drop operation. Now we need to create the drag and drop operation that's going to handle all the dragging and dropping of the game. So in the class drop down, we're going to choose the one we made, the drag drop. You can see it's asking for the default drag visual. So drag that up to our drag UI. And oh, apologies, it looks like we, uh, well, I forgot to expose the ability uh, variable. So go back to your drag drop, click on your variable, and tick expose on spawn. Compile that, and you can go back to your spellbook slot, and you should see it there. If you don't see it there, just turn the class back to none, then back to drag drop, and it should appear. And then from there, we can just plug in that variable back in. We're going to leave it at center center. But if you want to customize this, you're more than welcome to customize this. This simply tells where the icon is displayed in relation to the mouse pointer. Once we've got that, we're going to drag that out onto return node. And then we're going to drag our return value into the operation here. And hit compile. So with that done, we can now test that out. And push play. And in the spellbook, I can now click and drag my icons out. I don't have the ability to drop them in yet to the action bar but we can drag them out and you can see them attached to the mouse pointer so to recap what we've got here we've got a drag and drop operation this is handling all the code that handles the dragging of the uh in this case the icon around you don't have to do much to it you just need to set a variable of what it's going to be storing um the drag ui is the actual image that's going to be dragged around and on the spellbook slot we've done a detection for when the mouse has clicked on it, in this case the left mouse button, and telling it to detect drag. And this will trigger this on drag detected. So this creates the widget and then creates the drag and drop operation and ties them all together. So all together that allows you to drag items around. But what about the dropping? So the dropping here is handling on the ability system uh, action bar UI and action bar slot. And you're going to go into the graph and again, we're going to override a function. So go to override, and you're looking for on drop. And this is when you let go of the dragged item on top of that slot. So first thing you need to do is check whether or not the operation here is the drag and drop operation that we've set up. So cast to drag drop. And because drag drop has that ability in there, we can get the ability and we can now set that ability to the ability class in our variable list that was already there. So choose set ability and drag that in. So now we've stored that ability there. We now need to tell it to update it visually to represent the ability that's actually in that slot. So with the ability class here, we're going to get our icon image, get, and make sure it's visible. So set visibility. To visible and then we're also going to tell it to change its image so set a brush from texture to be the icon of the ability class so drag from ability class get class defaults and split the ability details to get the icon and finally, we're going to tell it that it is now available. So drag your is available out and choose set and choose it to be true. And hit compile. 
And now, if we go into our game and push play, I go into our spell book, I can drag this out and I can drag it on top of my ability slots here. And I can also override the ones that are previously there. And to show this is working, I can cast my fireball by clicking this button here. And I can change this now to the AoE. And the AoE will work. And there you have it. And there's your drag and drop functionality. Thank you for joining us on this Ability System series. It has been a long series and I thank you for uh, sticking it out. Um, there's lots more you could do with the Ability System series. There's a lot more abilities you can do, but this should be a good grounding to expand upon. With these four types of abilities, you can pretty much create most of the abilities you see in a lot of these types of games. So you should be quite flexible in where you can go with it. But there are always going to be these unique bespoke abilities that you may struggle to uh, to understand how they could be made in this. If you want to know uh, about a particular ability type, leave a comment below describing what ability you want to see made in this. And I may revisit this and show one-off abilities and how you can recreate certain abilities in games using this system. Thank you so much for everyone for joining me during this series. And a massive thank you to all my patrons for their continued support. It has been a long time coming in this series and it has been a lot of episodes. So thank you to all of you for sticking it out and showing your support for me. This wouldn't be possible without you guys. So thank you once again so much. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you like this video, hit that like button as well. Thank you to everyone for their support and their continued uh, patience with my videos. Um, I don't know why I said patience, but there you go. But thank you so much anyway, and I'll see you all guys for the next series. Bye guys.